This podcast contains adult language, descriptions of violence, sexual references, and other possibly offensive themes. Listener discretion is advised. Previously on Back to the Story. I do like flowers. So much. Would you bring me one? I lost mine, and I'd love to see it again. How did you lose it? I think you know. Mm, A gift for my queen. Each time the ice begins to melt away, the pulse begins again, you hit it again. Eventually, you see where the bloom, the ember, the burning effects of it doesn't seem to return again. Okay, is everyone else? Everyone back? Yeah, okay. Sounds like everyone's back. And Katie, whenever you need to leave, just, you know, do your thing, okay? Okie doke. Okay. So, So I put a circle roughly where I would have had that spike growth, I guess? Sure. And so that, he was, he was there. He's in the middle of it. All right. Yeah, that's, that's good. Okay. Um, and it, because they saw me cast it, everyone will be able to notice the spikes and we'll see that, you know, that's a bad touchy area. Bad touch. Okay. Uh, so jumping back into initiative, another light appears behind a tree to the south. It glows similar to the one that's right at the front of camp. And it moves and shifts right there. Once it reaches there, it is going to... This purple lightning reaches out, striking towards Vesper. Uh, That is an eight. As the lightning rushes towards you, you duck under it um, as this purple lightning just goes over your shoulder. That will bring us up to this one. As another light appears to the west, um, all of similar colors. As this one appears out of nowhere, just sparking into existence that quickly hovers quickly up to Ellery. That is a 19 to hit. Oh, yeah, that hits. Dealing 10 lightning damage as this purple lightning runs through you. And that will bring us up to this one. Here it is. As yet another light appears, this time to the north, coming into existence and flying down. And Ezekiel, the purple lightning, strikes out towards you, a nine as it strikes over as you quickly turn, nope. seeing it before it gets nope. to you. Nope, I'm not wearing, I'm, well, no, I would have slept in armor, even if it would have sucked, because we, we would have gotten attacked, so yeah, that messes. Okay, okay. so um, you're able to just dodge as some of your armor is seared, the chitin, with the purple lightning. That will bring us up to Melly. So Can surrounded I... by these uh, purple lights of purple lightning, you also see, enshrouded in purple glitter, this figure standing in the middle of this stuff. So you can very e- easily see that other individual. I just haven't put them on the map yet. Uh, okay. Can I throw a ray of frost at the person? Yeah. And it's at advantage. Oh, sweet. Okay. So conjuring the sickle of ice in your hand, uh, throwing it for it slams into their shoulder, bursting out. Uh, you see the shards of ice fly everywhere, and it hits, and the person didn't flinch or get knocked back at all, as if they are a hefty weighing uh, figure. But they do take the damage. With just a bit of snow and ice kind of falling down onto the spikes below. Uh, did you want to stay there? Anything else for you, Millie? Uh, no, I'm going to stay there. Okay, that brings us to Ellery. So, I think first thing I'm going to do, uh, we can five foot shift diagonally. So, yeah, I I will do that and move a little bit away towards the northwest. And then I'm going to cast, uh, let's just go with classic Firebolt at the weird purple light that just attacked me. Okay. As you mm-hmm. conjured a full bolt uh, of flames roaring across. 
That's a 22. That is. Eight fire damage. Eight. You notice the fire almost blends it for the energy, and it seems to disrupt it somewhat, um, but it takes the energy in stride. But it does seem to affect it to some degree. Okay, good to know. Uh, that's it. Okay, Calvin. Uh, first, can we establish where the uh, flower is? Uh, sure. So I'll say it's right outside of the fire. I'm on the right side, and I'll put a little X, X mark. So we'll say it's right here since Bull did go over to look at it. Okay. Cool beam. I will... Calvin will shift to over towards Ellery. He will grabs his holy symbol, words, and... What is it called? Offer a sacred offering by gripping it so hard that it pierces his hand until so blood starts to trickle down. He mutters uh, to himself a prayer. And I will take some damage here. Oh, I took a lot of damage. That's awesome. Cool beans. Um, totally worth it. Totally worth it. And he's going to grab his spear and poke at this purpley orb thing, almost investigating it with violence. Okay. Roll for investigate with violence. As the... Blood of your sacrifice uh, glows in a brief flash of sunlight, striking forth. Add all this together. It's, so it's a 13 to hit the first that, attack. That's going to miss as you strike forward. It, whoosh, this light shifts over just to the right. Second attack is a bit more for 17 to hit. Second strike misses as well. You come back Damn. and this form of light and lightning is very quick. Um, it's like trying to hit an insect. It's so fast, just shifting just an inch, um, but enough. Okay. That is all I can do. Okay, that'll bring us to Ezekiel. Okay. So, seeing how quick they are, bonus action, I'll go brown bear, and I'll just go ahead and try and take two swipes at the blue one. So, first I will bite. So is biting down, it shifts again. Great. And try a claw. 22. The 22 hits as the claws come through your paw too massive for it to effectively dodge. All right. 15 slashing damage. Um, wow. That's, uh, that's fine. As you come through, your claws disrupt, disrupt the energy, um, but some of it remains circling through in between uh, some of your claws. Okay. So it takes uh, something, but it resist. Yeah, I kind of figured that would happen. All right, that's my turn. Okay, and I actually skip this person, but not a big deal. Calvin, the light just north of you as that one roars towards you. Uh, that is an 18. That doesn't hit, sir. Okay, so the lightning rushes towards you and turning with shield and armor, it rushes over your armor. Uh, ineffectual. And Vesper. Okay, I'm going to five foot shift all that away next to ball a little bit more and away from this thing. Um, and I'm going to cast Toll the Dead on it. So it needs to make a wisdom save. Because I'm watching these whiz around and note that Dex is probably not the way to go. Uh, which one was it? Wisdom. Oh, I mean, which was the blue? Oh, or the, oh, or the green. green. The one next to me. Okay. It rolled a natural 19. Uh, 21. Six? Okay, nope. Sucks to suck. I will so, doom, post the the sound has no effect on it whatsoever. And it's an action to grab up my shield from my pack, and, like where I had it. For, for you, yeah, it would be. Okay. Never mind then. Okay. So attempting that, looking around, deciding your next move, that will bring us up to the figure. The figure as you look over, all right, fine, we're doing it this way. You hear the snapping of bone as the purplish fire-infused figure suddenly swells. Uh, what humanoid form was there uh, shifts away, revealing a hulking, nearly ball-sized, ten-foot-tall, hulking over massive with huge back muscles, rippling up, covering its neck. It is covered in a fur, nearly green-covered, has large tusk, ears that come to the side pointed, uh, with a beard, thick and bushy, hanging down to um, the middle of its stomach. 
It has these massive arms that hang down like the ape, like apes with a huge claws on either side, as it appears. And is currently covered in purple light. And Ezekiel, remind me, it takes something damage every time it moves through a square? Every five feet it moves, it takes 2d4 damage. Okay. No safe safe. So it's going to avoid that path and it's going to go this closest one. So 5, 10, 15, and then 20. So 3 times 2d4. So 64 okay. damage as he just turns, cuts into it. And is that difficult terrain as well? Uh, I believe so. I think it is. Let me too. look. Yeah, difficult terrain. So that's 64. 20. Okay. So you see blood beginning to pool up these massive hulking feet as it steps along. Um, it gets there and it just barely pushing through this pain and is going to shift and just sprint and is just able to get there. Um, but that's his whole turn. And that'll bring us up to Amson. Sweet. Okay. So Amson is going to move 10 feet to the south and just a little bit west. So he's kind of a little bit outside the battle, but in the middle of where everything's going on. And he'll throw a firebolt at the one to his right, the green marked one. Okay. Good and well. All right. That is a 10, so that does not hit. Yeah, so it flies off into the forest. And with my bonus action, I'm going to inspire Calvin. And uh, I'm going to sing, He finds it very easy to be true. When we're in danger, he's there for me and you. Yes, I'll admit he's a bit of fool for you. Because he's of climb. He walks the line. <laughs> awesome. Love it. So inspiring. Uh, is that the end of your turn? Uh, yep, that is everything. Okay, that brings us up to ball. I am going to try to move as close to big guy as I can. So 25 move should get me. I want to basically get somewhere here. Yeah, you can, you could get there. You can come around the top here. And the fire's not big enough for it to be a problem. You just step over it. Okay. You should be able to get there without Perfect. too much of an issue. Um, so I'll get there. Maybe as I step over the fire, I'm going to trigger my, uh, mantle. Um, yeah, so as you step over. <laughs> It rushes up, enveloping you. Yeah, so I think Ball's feeling I uh, just got a little bit cheated, so it's a little bit of uh, anger inside of him. And as he fires up that mantle with his bonus action, with his action, he's going to take his blade and swing it at um, this purple ball in front of him. Okay. Using his Phoenix Blade for an 8. Okay, swing it. This thing, but when you wind up to swing the weapon of this size, it's just far too slow as the purple light doesn't even shift until right before your sword gets there. Then it just, just three inches above as you swing, uh, Melly kind of ducking and moving to resist the backswing. Anything else for you, Bull? Uh, that'll be everything. Okay. Let me just give you your glorious light, which is going to about to... Ball on fire lights up the forest. And that will bring us up to... This green one, which is going to go up to Vesper. Uh, an eight again as lightning towards you. The red one is going to go for ball. There's a six. Misses or hits the flames, and the flames just disrupt it. And Melly. Melly, Melly, Melly. She's going to get out of this kill zone here. And is going to get near you. Closer to Amson. Let's see. Kind of delicious material she is working with. So she's going to get just there as she puts her thumbs together, whispering arcane words as flames erupt uh, towards this large, hairy creature and light, uh, both of which have to make deck saves. The light makes it. The other creature makes it as well. But they still take damage anymore. And that will bring us up to Ellery as these flames erupt out from Melly's hands. 
um, enveloping these creatures. Okay. Um, first things first, I am going to go ahead and use my last two remaining sorcery points to cast Shock and Grasp as a bonus action on this big guy here. Okay. Um, uh, that's a dirty 20. Uh, yes, that would. Okay. And... You rub from your hands, extending from your fingers. So that is 10 points of lightning damage. Okay. And then, uh... So I'm going to move as far as I can around him, since he can't take a reaction. So which way are you going? Uh, so I'm going up and around towards the okay. west. The purple will get an attack of opportunity on you. Mm-hmm. Rolls an eye, though. It erupts out, but not to no effect. And from here, as my action, I'm going to cast Chaos Bolt at the big guy. Okay. Oh, that's a natural one. Okay. Uh, roll that sweet D100. All right. Getting lots of these now. Uh, 34. 34. Damn, okay. So you feel power surge through your hand. Though the chaos bolt, it's shifting colors of different energies. Instead of flying towards it, it burst. And then in the air, turns and coalesces upon your hands, which are now vibrating with energy. You feel the next magical thing you do, you can channel this power through it as well. And it's going to hit twice as hard. Nice. It's vibrating unstably, but you have it for now. Okay. Is that your turn? Oh, that's it. Calvin. Calvin will shift forward, and he's going to plug away at this big baddie with as much pain as possible. And he's still lit up, right? Still got purpley, flamey fire. Yes, we still have advantage on these strikes. So that's 20 to hit. Yeah, hits. He's a uh, big target. I'm a, I'm gonna dump a uh, level two smite into this. I would expect nothing else. Holy moly! Five twenty four plus four is twenty eight plus three is thirty one on the first attack. Holy shit, Calvin! God damn! And then on the second one, that's not super bad. It's twenty one to hit. Yeah, you hit. Okay, and I'll just do a level one smite on this one. Plus four is sixteen plus three is uh nineteen on this one. And then uh with my shield I'm gonna try to I'm just gonna try to hit it, knock it down if I can. If he's too big, sure. at least I'll just hit it with a bash. Yeah, you can try, yeah. Large yeah. can try. Let's go ahead and use this one. Uh, do I get advantage on this, too? The attack roll? Yeah. Yeah, you would, almost. Uh, 14 plus 7 you hit. plus 3 yeah. is... So, 24. You hit, yeah. Absolutely. It's not a lot. Uh, it's just 1d4, so... 2, 6. So, that's 9 bludgeoning. Jesus. Okay. <sighs> And then he's prone if he, okay. if he can knock it prone. Yeah, uh, he's not prone. So, god damn, Calvin. Um, <laughs> Calvin spins. Uh, like channeling a ray of sunshine in his hand, he strikes through the hide into the gut, pulling it out um, as blood just begins to pour. Turning again before the creature can even really react, he hits it again, this time in the thigh, driving it back uh, onto one knee. But before he can get up to stand again, <laughs> spinning. <laughs> Hits it in the face with the shield as it knocks back, flying backwards onto uh, its back. It's grasping at the air, trying to find what the hell just hit him, uh, because apparently it was a Mack truck. Alive, but you see heavy wound pouring out of its stomach. This creature has gone from looking very tough to uh, on its back and about to die. That will bring us up to this purpley thing. Which is going to try to hit you, Calvin, since you are not the biggest threat. And that is a 10. So 
you feel something tickle the back of your neck, the back of your cape, but it seems to just like hitting a wall. Oh, sunshine. Alan giggles. You giggle, yeah. And Ezekiel. All right. I'm going to five foot shift here. So I'm flanking purple with Calvin. And I'll go ahead and try and bite and claw that bitch. Okay. Good for it. 22. Advantage. That'll hit. And 13. So that just the miss. bite. I will do... So that's 11 piercing damage. Yeah, that's the right damage roll. And I will also add a level 1 smite to that. So that's 2d8, I believe. Plus 16. Radiant. Okay, so that first bite goes in, rips in, psh, burst. An explosion of purple lightning and bright divine light. It scatters. The witch light broke it. So you would technically still have that attack left, but you used your movement. So I don't know if you can do anything, but... No. Okay, so we'll say you just at the same time, the bite and coals come at the same time. One of it hits and destroys this light. And that will bring us up to Vesper. Uh, okay, um, seeing that the big one is starting to go down, I'm going to Sacred Flame it, so it needs to make a Dexterity save. Add disadvantage, as is currently on that. First was a natural 20, second one is a 12, 13. Ah, not going to make it. Okay, so this really fails dealing. Ooh, that is uh, 12 Radiant. God damn, okay. As this column of Radiant Light... <sighs> smashes down on this thing as he's just starting to get to his feet and is brought down um, again. You see he's unmoving for a moment. Hands are still. You see one of the right hand begins to curl back up. So, okay, I have two questions. The flower, is it still burning or did it stop after Melly pelted it? Uh, it hasn't returned back. What would it be to pick that up? In interaction, you have to go over to it. Are okay. you... You have your rapier in one hand and you're casting one hand. with the other? Yeah, okay. so it's free. Okay. Technically, because uh, it's just holding my symbol. So I'm going to run over then, and I know I'm taking an attack of opportunity. I'm going to go 10 and grab that. That's a 16 to hit? That will hit. Dealing 10 lightning damage? Because it singes your back and runs up your spine, your nervous system tingling, almost tripping as you get to the edge of the fire. Bend okay. down and you pick it up. You have it in your free 10. hand. Okay, great. 15, 20, 25, Have you been rolling your, your things? No. Oh, I need to do that now. Okay. I hadn't taken damage before now. Uh, but that's a dirty 20 wisdom safe. Okay. So you feel anger, but you push it down, grab the uh, frozen bloom, and turn and move away. Yep. Okay. So it's his turn. And sit on deck. As the creature right hand curls, you see slowly dancing flames as if in slow motion upon the hands, the palm. The other one ignites as well. It sort of <sighs> slowly gets to its feet, slaps its hands together, and releases a bout of flames. I need ball and... Calvin and Ezekiel to make dexterity saving throws as he stands up, shifting as flames roar out. 13 for Ball. 15 for Ezekiel. So, Ezekiel, you will say, Ball, you just fail. And uh, Ball should get a aura bonus, right? No, the thing with this Phoenix thing is. Oh, wait. What no, aura from bonus? Calvin. Calvin. Plus three for me. Okay, so that's 16 then. Ball saves two. And for Galvin? What, what is the inspiration dice? An 8? D8. Uh, okay, because I, I rolled poorly. It's a 4 plus. This is a dexterity, so that's a 5. So that's an 8. It's a 9. Currently sitting at a 9. That's a 12. Good roll. 12 total. Even with your bonus? Yeah. Okay. So Calvin fails. So Calvin, you take 42 points of fire damage. That's uh, cool. I'm dead. Ball, you take half. So you take 21. I'm going to use Absorb Elements to take to have it again. 10. So you take 10 instead. And then Ezekiel, you take 21. Doing Ow. this, standing up, and then moving is just turning and beginning to sprint away. Um, that's all I, I can currently do. Attack of Opportunity? 
If you're still conscious, you would. Yeah, yeah, I was over exaggerated. Okay, you have your half work thing anyway, so yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. You do notice as he stands up, some of the wounds, grievous as they are, begin to heal up, though they're Shit. still severe. That's gonna hit. That's a twenty-eight. Yeah, absolutely. So it releases these flames, turns, begins to run as a spear whoosh, into its back. It's my. If I needed to say that. Why even roll on this point? I mean, <laughs> 7,000 damage. 19, 20, 21. Okay, how do you do this? As he stands up, flames roar out. Um, okay, let's see here. How how dramatic do I want to do this? <laughs> uh, so, Calvin, as oh, as though it's like, uh, it, like, a, like one of your favorite anime specials, a flame, the flame bursts across him and it just goes across the screen and you can't see anything and then you see a shadow. And then it's Calvin hunched over his shield, and he kind of just kind of swings like his arms forth and kind of breaks from the the smoke and the flame. And he just like as he's at, sees his foe about to run, he just like kind of does one of those uh, the Brad Pitt uh, whatever that movie jump? was. Yeah, and it's just uh, just kind of goes and stabs in him in the neck. Yeah, out running, jumping, leaping out of the flames with his rolling off still of your burnt shoulders. And armor into the back as you kind of take your shield arm, grabbing the shoulder of this creature, the hair, riding it down into the ground as it slides from your impact and momentum um, a few feet before coming still. Turning, you can see the lights flickering, growing immensely dim. It seems like they're beginning to fade away, and in a moment they'll be gone. Um, but Amson, Ball, um, would have a chance before they disappear if he wanted to do something. Hey, listen! They're all navvies now. I'm going to say shut up, navvy, and uh, viciously mock the green one to my right. And you say it looks like they're fading? Yeah, it looks like they're fading. 11. Nope. I'll cast Compelled Duel on one of them and see if they decide to stop fading. Okay. Uh, so it takes five points of psychic damage and has disadvantage on its next attack. Okay. And ball? Uh, it'll be a wisdom save. Uh, which one? Um, the one closest to me, I think it's the red one. Uh, six. Okay, so it fails and through, it has disadvantage on attack rolls against other creatures yeah. and wisdom saving through every time it attempts to move into a space that's more than 30 feet away from me. So as this witch light begins to fade, whoosh, um, it ignites again in your presence. And that will bring us up to the green one. Um, now pissed off, this thing goes straight for Vesper. He's going to attack at disadvantage. This is currently mocked. Uh, that is a 11. No. Um, it runs up the willow boughs over your head, but to no effect. The red one is going to attack you, Ball. That is a 21 to hit. Uh, that will hit. 12 lightning damage as it runs up your front and up to your throat. And then, not wanting to be left out of the party, this one... Oh, sorry. Um, when I The Compelled Duel is a bonus action. Would I still have been able to try to attack it? Sure, good. Can I still do that, or is it too late? Yeah, yeah, no, good. Okay, so I'll just do um, like a regular Booming Blade attack on it. And... Okay. It's not at advantage, right? This guy's not very fired. Uh, no, uh, no. But will a natural 20 hit? <laughs> it sure will. So, I mean, I have to put a smite into that on principle. Right, so it's required. Just for effect, it'll be a level 3 smite. Um, and I'll get my calculator out. <laughs> Everyone take a 30-minute break. <laughs> so, first of all, it's 20 slashing, 11 thunder, and I'll get the calculator for the smite. All right, I didn't roll too well. So plus an extra 30 uh, radiant damage. Yeah, so as you draw your, your blade over the flames, kind of funnel up from your form as you come down, tush, crashing into the ground, uh, straight through this light that shatters upon the impact. As you also hit the ground, and there's sort of a, tush, 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 a singe burn of divine light upon the ground as well. That thing is destroyed. And now we'll come to this blue one, which is going to come down towards Vesper. Um, and that is a 16. Yes. I'm going to use cutting words on the damage. Uh, so six lightning down to... Six. Right. Nothing. 
So do I need to make that save or no? Uh, since it didn't deal any damage, no. So the lightning goes by you. But just as it begins to form amps and calls out something, and the lightning just goes over your shoulder, slamming into the tree behind you. And that'll bring us to Melly, who's going to fireball. The green one, hitting, dealing some damage. Let's see if it's enough. If it's not, that'll bring us up to Ellery as a roll this damage off. Um, okay, I'm going to shift down a little bit so I can get a slightly better view past Ball. And then I'm going to... Remembering that Firebolt didn't do as much as I hoped it would, I'm going to cast Eldritch Blast instead. One beam at each of the two remaining glowing things. Go for it. If you conjure up this channeling energy. One's an eleven. That's a good mess. Oh, they're both missing. The other one is a is a nine. Okay, so your hands are shaking, vibrating with this chaos energy. You try to channel it. And <laughs> the bolts, the Eldritch Blasts that go off, <laughs> rocket through the forest. <laughs> hit into several boughs of willow trees far beyond. You miss by a wide, wide margin thanks to you, these vibrating energy in your hands. That will bring us... Anything else for you? That's it. Calvin. Uh, I don't know. We just have these little balls left, so I will move to the right there. I will throw my spear at it. Sure. Sure can. Why not? Um, the shorter. <sighs> Spinning, spiraling. It's only a 15. It goes seemingly almost right through it as it just shifts up. As it flies over, hitting the stump on the other side, embedding it in the wood. Would I, with my second attack, could I throw a javelin at it? Or would that yeah. not count as it? Okay. Yeah, you can do that. Cool. I'll try again with the javelin. That's worse. So pulling it out is ready for you. Just shifting the switch light as you throw a secondary thing. Another javelin hits into the stump right by your spear. And that will bring us up to Ezekiel. And are Ezekiel, are you still in bear form? Yep. Wow, okay. Because I, I saved, so I didn't have to. Oh, yeah, that's true. I am not. I don't have much bear form left, but I think with 40 feet of movement, I can get here. So I'll flank with Vesper and attack the green one first. Eh, where are my attacks? Go down. Bite. No. Oh, wait, no. It's advantage. Uh, so 24. You do. Yeah, at advantage, you do hit it. 12 piercing. Okay. You see this light sparking in and out of existence. It's hanging on by a thread. 20. Hit. 30. For 12 slashing. Um, with that last claw, you just come down and smash on top of it. Bursting into purple lightning energy. Dispersed. There's only one remaining now. Uh, that's my turn. As we come to Vesper. Okay, perfect. I'm going to fast it shift to flank with Ezekiel. And since I have the heart in the one hand, I'm just going to stab it with my rapier. Okay. Natural 19, so 26, so that should that do hits. it. Yeah, that is. And that will be a d8, and uh, get sneak attack because Ezekiel is there. Garbage. Four damage total. Okay. So oh no, I'm sorry, eight, because I have my dex mod. Eight damage okay. total. Okay. Striking into it. You notice uh, where the form shifts away from some weapons, uh, yours is able to pierce through, similar to Calvin's as well. Find a more solid form, though it still remains. That's me. That brings to Amson. Amson is going to viciously mock the last remaining purple light thingy. Um, and that is a 18. Damn it. I stumble on my words and nothing happens. Okay. I, uh, as ball, what do you do? Um, I will run up to it. Um, let me make sure I have enough loot, though. Can I squeeze into there? Or is that, like, that's a tree or is that a bush? Uh, that is a tree. So let's see. Okay. You could get there, potentially. All right. Um, whatever. I'll just use my action to run up to it and then I'll end my turn. I don't think okay. it, it doesn't look like it's fading, so. Yeah, I don't it's have to rush to do anything. It's fading, but not, not willingly. Right. Okay. As, as Paul, you shift forward. 
And that will bring us up to it. Decide what it does. Uh, it's going to go for Vesper. So it's going to five foot shift up into the air. Or actually, no, it's just going to go for Vesper first. I'm going to use cutting words on that. On the attack okay. roll. Uh, that is a 21 to hit. So minus... Ooh, that it's I'm, still going to hit me. I miss the... Box. No matter what you roll, it's going to hit me. You have AC 13. Six. I rolled a 6. So that okay. is 15 AC. 15. Oh, that'll hit self bound. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is my AC. <laughs> uh, 12 lightning damage. Is it just runs yeah, down? Don't look great. Okay. Uh, I'm um, gonna take that save. Uh, is a dirty twenty, so I'm fine. Okay. And at this point, it is going to fly straight up. The three of y'all will get a tax of opportunity on it. So just flying into the air. Dirty twenty again. Um, Ezekiel will miss. Vesper, you will hit. Eleven. Uh, this would be Booming Blade for 15. Uh, that will miss. So Ezekiel sweeps the claws as it's just over. Um, as Bobby, you come down with the sword crashing between Vesper and Ezekiel. Actually, Ezekiel at advantage, still 16. Um, as Vesper, just before it gets out of your range, you leap up, striking in. You said 11 damage? Uh, yes. As it striking into it, the purple lightning run down, runs down your shore before psh, dispersing, leaving y'all in. Well, still the bright light of the burning ball, um, but the purple lights have faded. Um, the growth still remains, and then the heavily wounded corpse of the creature lays face down on its back as stillness begins to return to the night. Fuck, I'm tired. Yeah. What the fuck is this thing? I don't know, but I don't think that we can simply walk away from this heart any longer. I kind of uncurl my fingers. and It's dead, though. Why does she need it? Shifting back into a human. I can bring plants back to life. I'm sure she can. Do you want to leave this here, then? Let them come and find it and move our camp? I'm still not sure why we're protecting it. don't need it for anything. I've, I'm already of the opinion that we shouldn't give this being anything that it wants, but perhaps I overreacted. Uh, DM, quick question. How far away is the water? Um, depends on how deep you wanted to go in. Um, that's kind of up to Calvin and Anson since y'all found it. A decent ways, at least. Could be anywhere from 60 feet to a couple hundred, up to y'all. Ideally, I would have wanted some place where it would have been a minute to get to from the water, not something mm -hmm. that you could just run to and be in the water. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So you're probably a five minute or so trot away from water. Not too far. Well, there's still a couple of minutes left on Vespers and I watch. Or oh, Calvin, if you want to. Um, I'm thinking that we should probably just take it to the water and toss it in as far as we can toss it. They come through the water, though, Amson. Don't you think they'd take it from there? Possibly, but I think it might damage the bio bloom, whatever it's called, the flower, enough that it wouldn't be recoverable, or at the very least, it would be extremely difficult to recover. The other thing is that when it's in the water, it might get covered up by the dirt and the mud or something. Being covered up didn't stop them from finding it here. What does our prisoner look like right now? Glancing over when the battle commenced, when the light first came, when the voice first showed, a smile. As the battle wore on, the smile faded and shock remains on his face. Bal, you mentioned a friend. Who is your friend that wanted this? Um, when I stop and kind of, when Ball stops and thinks about I guess this woman, now that he's had a moment of kind of clarity, does he know who this woman is? You can um, pick. Go ahead. Because, uh, I mean, right now, Ball's thinking that it's likely um, someone kind of playing tricks on him rather than it being an actual person. Um, would Ball think otherwise? There's a strange counter thought in Ball's mind. 
is you understand that there's some connection to these creatures that attacked you, to the Fardana, but at the same time, the image of the person that revealed itself in your dream was nothing short of nearly angelic. A kind-hearted friend that just simply wanted her flower back. So you feel familiar er, familiarity with the woman. You don't know who she is. I can't remember my friend's name. Maybe I'm just tired. Who are you talking about? My friend wanted me to return the flower to her. And how did she tell you this? We've all been camping here. She asked me. I believe it was in my dream. That the wine tasted real? Wine? Um, what happened exactly? And I think I'll kind of hazily retell the story. Um, kind of like leaving out some of the key detail, or like some of the extraneous details just because all of my attention was focused on my friend and it was kind of in this dreamy reality. And the long and short is that, uh, felt like I was in a, um, like a safe place. And, um, like she greeted me, asked me to return the flower to her. And I saw no reason not to because she's my friend. And then next thing I know, I was standing over the fire and we were ambushed. I kind of look around at the others. Anyone else think that sounds maybe like the witch? Probably. I'm going to hold the heart closer and start backing away from Ball. Okay. It's still frozen in a ball of ice, so the ice is slowly deteriorating. The the bloom doesn't seem to have returned any light or warmth. Well, I for one would just like to try and finish up my nap, but quite frankly, I don't think I could handle another attack like that without it, but... Does anyone need healing before we go back to bed? Because I'm fucking I... rough. Yeah. I could use a little. Um, I will... How many people need it? To all Ezekiel, you guys good? Yeah, good. Okay, I'm going to cast Cure Wounds at first level, then on both Ellery and Calvin. Uh, so that is... Six points. Uh, Twelve to Ellery. God damn it, really? Uh, sorry, four to Calvin. Or no, seven to Calvin. I will also... Um, actually, I have enough 12 slots. I'll do it again on Calvin. So that's a, that's a twelve. Does anyone else still need anything? Because I'll probably just use my healer's kit on myself. Ball could use some healing, or he can just have a short rest. Okay. I will then do also my healer feat on whoever needs it. Um, okay. Calvin, that's a natural 18, so you can take a full hit die. And Calvin, uh, you can have those 15. Ball can take a full hit die. Ezekiel, you yes. said you needed some? As you patch up Ball, you notice he's just kind of staring off into space as you kind of patch some of his wounds. Well, also, he's he's on fire for a good minute, so you patch up the other people first before the Divine Flames fade and then the angry Giant Heritage fades. Ezekiel, you said you needed some? No, I was offering my okay. healing to Calvin if he was spilled down. Okay. And Ellery, did you want to okay. play? Okay. That's an actual 20 for myself, so I will take one as well. Okay. I think I'm also going to cast Cure Wounds to myself because I'm about to go back to bed and I hurt. Well, are you sure you're alright? I think Ball's still looking out into the distance. Ball. I'll try and giant. Ball, are you okay? Ball will look over to you for a second and then just kind of like put his finger up. And continue looking back out into the distance. Not his middle finger up, his <laughs> index finger. Yeah. <laughs> I'll start to cross my arms, realize I'm still holding the sword, and just kind of put my hand on my hip. Seeing that, Ezekiel will give you a knowing look, and then go back to bed. Do you all sleep in the same camp? Do you move a little bit away from the dead body? <laughs> I would want to move from the body. <laughs> but. Okay. Anyone that wants to, you can easily do so. Ball hasn't moved, though. Just staring off to the distance. I already laid back down. I'm not getting up. 
Is it about time for Calvin to take his shift? Uh, yeah, it would be, actually. And everyone that is probably needing to go to sleep soon or risk not getting a long rest or even an exhaustion level if this continues. I, before I lay back down to get some rest, I'm going to go over to, to Ball, just put my hand on his arm, uh, and say, You should probably get some sleep. But if you have another dream, wakes one of us up first. As you're talking again, I'll, I'll, I'll put my finger out to you this time and continue looking out in the distance, concentrating on something. Do you hear something? If anything else happens, wake one of, one of us up, okay? And I go to bed. Okay. So you go to bed. I'm going to stay up a little bit, just kind of watching Ball. I'm going to wait until I see Amson go to sleep. And then once I know he's in bed and asleep, then I'll turn in. Sure. Um, so Ezekiel's gone down. Calvin is in watch mode. Aunt Melly goes down. Uh, Amson, Ellery, do you all find sleep? Uh, Ball, do you do as well? Yeah, I think. Um, did you see my message? Uh, yeah. And Ball, that's the last you notice. Okay, um, I think I'll continue kind of staring into the distance. Probably, I guess, once most people have kind of tucked into bed. Sure. And then I'll sit down and continue staying out in the distance while I patch myself up. Okay. Doing so as Calvin is still on the watch, do you eventually fall asleep afterwards? Uh, yeah. Okay. So eventually everyone finds sleep. Um, Calvin taking the last watch, seeing nothing, um, just the occasional sound of birds and insects um, as the sun begins to peek over the trees shining through. Waking up the next morning, um, you'll move a little ways away from this first camp, but are in the vicinity. Um, the new day greets you, a cool wind carrying salt for the nearby marshes and oceans um, is on the wind. Um, looks like it's a bright day, but covered by large white clouds of red. What would you like to do? Uh, well... Just for the record, uh, Calvin would have, if, assuming that it's been quiet all night, he would have been gone to check on the, our elven friend, and then he'd just start talking to him, been like, man, that was crazy. Do you know what that, clearly, not uh, as really associated with the fact that he probably doesn't understand anything he's saying, just talking to him, been like, man, what was that thing? That Do you know that thing? You looked like uh, like he was like your savior at first, now, like, man, what was that? You know, kind of go over and kick it, be like, what is this? I don't even know. Going back over to him, man, I don't have anything like that and where I came from. I don't, I have never seen anything like it. I tell you where I came from. I'm Calvin, Calvin son of mine. Calvin, shut the <laughs> fuck up. <laughs> the next and, person who wakes me up tonight is getting this rapier in their eye. And Calvin, as you do this in a language he doesn't understand, but as you like kick over someone he apparently respects very much, you see him flinch. And he goes from like fear that you're about to do the same to him to just confused because you're talking at him, but not in a threatening tone and sort of a friendly conversation. And he still doesn't understand what you're doing, yet he, you're kicking his boss of some sort. He's very confused uh, and afraid. Um, but otherwise, Calvin, after you do so and seeing nothing else, eventually the sun rises and a new day greets you. I'll let everybody wake up. I'm not going to wake them up. I'll just they can wake up naturally. Maybe yeah. start cooking food. And I'll say you wake up in different stages. Vesper probably last. Um, but you, you, this is a late morning start. You'll probably kind of finally all wake up around 10 just from the late night and all their interruptions as opposed to your normal 8 a.m. start. Well, uh, if Vesper is going to be the last one to wake up, I'm going to suggest that somebody stronger than myself attempt to pry this rapier from her. I don't care. <laughs> I think Ball will try to help. Thank you, Ball. And then, uh, assuming does Vesper kind of let it happen? Uh, she's asleep. So oh, is this can, is still while she's asleep? A sleight of hand check to attempt to do it without waking her up. 
and then you'll have to roll uh, a strength to actually pull it off. So this is just getting to her, getting your hands around it before you pull roll a uh, sleight of hand. Okay. Um, uh, can I inspire Ball quickly? Sure. Like with a quiet, you yeah. know, maybe to try to help Vesper stay asleep. Just something like, I'm thinking Slayer. <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, no, Mega I just... Death just really does it for yeah, yeah, me yeah. under like a baby. <laughs> I'm going to... No, it's something really, really quiet. I'm just going to go up to Ball and say, Ball, I think this is more important than we understand. You can do this. Oh. That's a 13. Um, she doesn't wake up. So now you can roll a strength check. So you get your fingers around it without her waking up. So now... And you only get like one finger around because it's uh, like a cucumber. Now a strength check to actually pull it off. And this is where I like, I put my foot on her chest and I just like yank. <laughs> pull her arm off with it. Um, okay, and then I will do my uh, 15. Yeah, so you pull it off. Um, it's like bending back metal, just as Ezekiel noticed before. Before it whips back into place, uh, unnaturally reforming into the six-snaked rapier handguard. As Vesper, you suddenly wake up to this force um, as it's removed from your person. Do I suffer any damage from that? Because I uh, realized I lost one one hit points. didn't roll for that last time. Yeah, you take one. Do I roll point. for it this time? I mean, yeah, I take but for a different reason. Okay, that's, well, that's actually really good. That's a 21. Okay. So it's removed from you, and suddenly all of the feelings you had about the power of this rapier and what it could do and what you could do with it are gone. And you see it for what it really is. I, I will Ball. scramble back along the ground away from it. Ball, make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, fuck. You're still inspired because you haven't used it. Uh, is inspiration... Oh, wait, hold on. Is inspiration advantage? No, it's not. So It's just an extra dice. Because I rolled with advantage for sleight of hand. Like, just dumbly thinking I had advantage. So that would have, should have been an eight. Um, I'm not going to go back. So she technically might have noticed, but I'm, we're not going to go back. You, you rip it off of her. Okay. Even okay, if she's sorry. waking up in the process, no problem. I think just, I would have used my inspiration then with my eight. So let's just, I'm going to do a straight roll here just to kind of appease the GM gods. Um, sorry. And then it's a wisdom save, right? Yeah. Wisdom save. And you're uh, all. Probably Natural ones one. together, but Calvin just thought it was the end gods. <laughs> you see why Vesper likes this weapon. Uh, it feels it's kind of small in your hands, but uh, it feels good. All right. Well, can I see that we're going to make sure that this thing does not get into the wrong hands? You're right. We'll hold on to it. Well, you should probably give it back. I understand that you don't want to. I Believe me, I understand don't, you don't want to. I don't want anybody touching it. I want to cover it up and hopefully handle it in a way that nobody's going to be touching it. I think you're right. No one should touch this. No one should touch it. Including you, Ball. He's not going to listen to you, Anton. All right. All right. Hold on to it, Ball, but may I look at it later to make sure the snakes aren't going to bite you too? You can hold it while I do so. Sure, I need to talk to you about Daphne anyway. Who? We'll talk later. What? Okay. And then I'll, I think Ball will go, like, get breakfast, or, like, sit down to have some breakfast while he checks out his fancy new blade. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, you're able to eat breakfast. You'll just eat rations, good berries, rations. Okay. So just mark off your rations. Y'all had one yesterday, too as well, so mark that off as well. Uh, having breakfast, kind of patching up the remainder of your wounds, you can take another short rest if you need to this morning as you kind of prepare for the day. And you're all just sitting on stumps or logs or whatever nearby. So after my morning prayers, um, I will go over to Ball. May I take a look at that just to make sure you're not going to get bitten? Ball. Oh, so to clarify, is Ball against letting someone see it? Um... Not yet, but you you trust them, but you won't hand it over. Right, okay. But you'll like, gonna... hold it. Right. Um, so that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll kind of, I'll hold it and just kind of show it to you while I'm gripping it. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not going to take it from you. I just want to look at the snakes. 
So I'll kind of, I assume the snakes are on the hilt, so I'll kind of turn my hand around. And, and I will touch it and I'll cast Remove Curse. Okay. Does that just happen? At your touch, all curses affecting one creature or object end. If the object is a known curse magic item, its curse remains, but the spell breaks its owner's attunement to the object so it can be removed or discarded. So Ball's no longer compelled. Okay. So Ball, you realize the danger of this weapon and that it was controlling you and that it was poisoning your mind. You are free to let go of it if you so choose. Well, I'm not going to just hand it back over to Vesper and repeat the cycle. I don't don't think I'm holding it. I think I literally, like, touched along one of the snakes. So if you let it go, it's just going to fall. I think uh, I will place it on the table. And I don't know if there's, like, some kind of (laughs) a There's a table in this forest. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I haven't mentioned. There is a picnic table. You can put it on the stump. Sure. Okay. Sure. I put it on the stump, and then I look for something uh, to kind of wrap with it. And and as I do, I'm like... One hand pointing in that, like, hold, like holding my hand over it, saying, I oh, wouldn't touch that. I go over and I grab the rapier. Tell her you, <laughs> you solved my so. rapier. <laughs> <laughs> it only took ten sessions. <laughs> um, that's confusing. So wait. So if it's a known, if the object is a cursed magic item, it's cursed remains. So I can't cast this again and just, like, have it not be no. cursed anymore? No, curses on items don't go oh, away. Shit. They're just hard. That's some goddamn bullshit. Well, fuck me. Okay. There's a rapier embedded in a stump in the forest <laughs> for some passerby to we call it Excalibur. <laughs> oh, right. gosh. Could we? Maybe one of the wild elves will grab it and be cursed. I don't think that's a good idea. That thing poisons the creature I stabbed it with. Yeah, I want to take one of my furs and wrap it, just kind of like throw it on top of the rapier, and I'm going to try and pull it out with it covered, just to like, see if we can transport. Yeah, you're you're able to do so with those thick covers. Hey, Amson, remember that thing about you handing us cursed items? Yeah. What's How up? we said if it happens a few times, it's a habit? Well, okay. This counts. This counts as one of the times. Ah. Uh, see, now, here's the thing. I'm so cautious about it that I end up just, like, I don't do it to myself, but then the people around me end up having to deal with it. And it's mm-hmm. quite unfortunate. Are you saying we're not as cautious as you? No, I'm saying that my caution puts all of you in a rather unfortunate situation. So. I will wholeheartedly apologize. I'm sorry. That's okay. Well, tomorrow, I didn't think about it today, but tomorrow maybe I can cleanse it of all magic. It was a great rapier. You can do that? Yeah. Same way as I can kind of try and break a curse. Right. Through the power of AIU. Are you two both okay? I look at Best Burn Ball. Besides the snake bites, I think I'm all right. So I think the witch's name is Daphne. 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 Did she come back again last night? No, I think she wants me to go to her this time. I think we should maybe not do that. I got a question. Do we want to try to properly destroy this thing? Maybe putting it to the sword will do something, I don't know. It's so pretty, though. That's why I liked it in the first place. <laughs> um, I, Are we talking about the flower? I'm talking or? about the flower. Oh, okay, yeah. No, let's fuck that thing up. I mean, destroying okay, the, the sword doesn't off. sound like a terrible thing either, but I'm talking about the flower. Daphne did say it was just a misunderstanding. Yeah, that's... that's she what has a good reason for this flower. I'm not going to trust anything she says. And why her interest in bowl? Maybe because he can understand her. At some point, Calvin would like to go up to Ezekiel and poke him and be like, hey, can you get Mr. Elf Thing to identify scary big thing we killed last night? That would be swell. I'm super curious. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, Yeah, I'll, I guess, take off his gag. Uh, Friend, <laughs> what is that? Yeah, that was... 
Nico, a friend of our queen, he's... He was a knight of hers, a soldier, above the others. I don't know who you all are, or where you come from. He should go. I'm not feeling so high and mighty today, are you? Well, that tends to happen. I didn't ask who, I asked what. Mm-hmm. You are blind, then. He uses a different word. Jashant, which roughly translate in common to troll. Hmm. Thank you. No, stuff the sock back in his mouth. A <laughs> troll of some kind, apparently. Also, Gross. he seems terrified that we were able to destroy it. Hmm? Uh, We've been able to the... destroy a lot of things that we maybe shouldn't have been able to. Or that other people couldn't anyway. Did the troll have anything on him? Like, if we rifle through his possessions? Going over, there's a large armored piece on their shoulder. There are like neck, a necklace that goes around his neck and around his bracelets around his wrist. They dangle from the wrist and the necklace. Uh, several feathers. Um, there's a few pieces of glass that are kind of tied into it. Uh, sea glass that's been smoothed over time. He has a rough belt pouch around his side, which contains a two bottles of wine and a fairly large machete, which would be roughly um, a long sword, but it's like a big giant machete. Um, the giant piece of armor that he has around his shoulder does that look like something that Ball could make use of? Uh, it looks like something you could strap on top of your armor. Yeah. Okay, I think maybe if, unless someone objects, like maybe when Ball sees Calvin kind of going through his belongings, Ball might kind of walk up to it, pick it up, and just try to size it up and see if it is of any combat use to Ball. Yeah. Uh, Yo all gathering around, seeing it closer. It looks like the rounded part. Uh, the bottom of a wine barrel seems to be stamped uh, within, and it's been reinforced with some iron around the edge and then strapped over to form a rough shoulder pauldron. It's not often I find something my size of a different person. Uh, so seeing the, the bottles of wine, I look at Ball and I say, is this the same kind of wine that was in your dream? I don't think Ball would recognize anything from the bottle. Um, I guess I will open up one of the bottles and hand it to him. Uh, smelling it, do I kind of recognize familiar smell? Yeah, it's familiar. It's warm, inviting, something seductive about the smell. Almost perfumey, in a way. It smells good. Mm, this smells like Daphne's. I'm not sure we should be drinking any of this. I don't know if it's the wine that had an effect or something else, though. Probably best just to be safe and not. Uh, if I have ten minutes to mutter and chant, uh, anything on the troll thing ping with a detect magic? Um, nothing magical. Okay, just checking. I'll take his necklace. Okay, it's kind of cool. Hypothetically, though, with Ezekiel's casting to detect magic that's 30 feet, am I close enough that that <laughs> cuckoo metagaming pigeon, that that bone dagger starts to ping? Actually, bringing that in, that reminds me. So one, Ezekiel, yes. The flower does ping as magical, even though the ice is melted away and the flower doesn't return its uh, full burning energy. It, it's actually, you can touch it with no problem. Uh, there's still some residual magic there. Stronger than you thought, because the flower looks like it's iced over dead. You also notice something on Vesper as well that pings with magic. A one of the probably many daggers that she has strapped to her. Uh, Vespa, one mm-hmm. of your daggers is all lit up. I was looking for magic. No, not that one. No, not that one. I no, not that one. My, where do I have it? I think I, uh, I pull out my left sleeve. That's where I have it. Uh, okay, it's that one. <laughs> Oh, 
That's the bone we got off all the pain links. Is this one cursed too? Well, I can try to identify it. Okay, let's see that. All right. Now we'll carefully take it off and kind of. I can willingly hand it to Ezekiel or to Amson, right? Yeah, no problem. Okay. And, and while okay. I'm at it, I'll since we can now, I'll identify the the flower as well. Sure. Which one you want first? Uh, let's go with the dagger first. Why not? Okay. The bone dagger acts as a simple plus one dagger, but also if you attune to it, you don't have uh, you don't have to, but if you do attune to it, you can also sheath it inside your flesh. You feel the pain, um, but you can sheath it inside of your flesh and then withdraw it as a react as an interaction as you normally would any weapon in a sheath. All right, I'll tell Vesper that that it's really gnarly and you're probably going to get hurt, but it is magical and dangerous. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, is it cursed? It's not cursed. I don't think it is, but I, I mean, we identified that sword last time and it didn't. Brain up a curse, so. Well, it's gonna hurt me. I'm not gonna. How is it gonna hurt me? Well, if. If, like, you put it inside your arm and it shoots out, then it might probably hurt you, but. Mm. I'm gonna identify the flower now. Okay. So, touching the flower without being burnt. There is some magical presence still remaining, um, though the flower is. near dying. You notice that the magic is slowly, after it's been wounded, slowly radiating out, just leaking this energy um, away from it. Um, the flower is dying. You're not sure how long it'll last, but uh, unless care is given to it, it will probably die. Uh, maybe within a week, you're guessing. You never dealt with magical flowers like this before. Um, but you notice that there is a resonance that comes with this, this flower that radiates out and seems to shift in its vibration. This flower can take the place of any material component that costs gold up to 500 gold pieces. For any spell that requires a material component, it can replace it up to 500 gold pieces, but it is used immediately and disappears if you do it in that way. Uh, so I think as Amson is identifying the flower, Paul will kind of walk up behind him and say, Daphne said it can be regrown. Yeah, I can see why she might want this. It can be used as an extremely expensive spell component, but it is used in the process. However, the magic that it does contain is currently getting weaker. Slowly getting weaker. I imagine that once it runs out, it will no longer be worth anything. So, we have a decision to make it seems like. What are witches, Nemzen? Witches? Uh, yes. Witches are frequently characters in all sorts of different stories. They tend to possess some sort of magical power that is mysterious and unknown to the common folk. And quite often they use their magic for evil means. For example, there's stories of witches kidnapping and eating children. Uh, I mean, basically any bad thing, there's stories of them kidnapping and eating children. But, um, yeah, I mean, witches, they are dangerous people with dangerous magic and are usually out for themselves and seek harm against others. What has Daphne done to be evil? Well, Ball, I'm not entirely sure. But something that evil people like to do sometimes is they like to tell you nice things. And they like to look very nice and pretty and all sorts of things to make you do what it is that they want. And... Sometimes what they want you to do is necessary for them to do something even worse in the future. I think I'll look to, um, like, to Melly, Ellery, and Vesper and say, like, look at them and look back to Amson and say, do you think to those elves that we found, the ones that fit the water, do you think that they are witches to them? 
I'm not sure. With all honesty right now, all we've seen is another culture. We haven't entirely seen that these people are evil other than the fact that they attack us. But, to give them the benefit of the doubt, if we really are trespassing, then maybe we kind of deserve it. But, if we're not, then they are trying to fulfill something that they believe is true. In terms of this witch queen, I imagine that either she is kind to these people because they give her something that she wants, or she is very, very powerful, and these people know not what they do. However, I cannot say which is which. Hmm. Maybe it is all just a big misunderstanding. Maybe. And I have a feeling the only way we'll find out is if we just keep on keeping on. Uh, Ball will nod and kind of pat Anson on the back while he, uh, I guess, slowly ends the scene and walks away. Sure. And as we begin to close out this night, let's get an idea of where you guys are heading next. What are you doing next? So let's decide that so we can uh, know what we're doing next time. Um, I'm inclined to travel a a little bit more inland rather than following this coastal path that we've been on. And I think we talked about that already. So you're in between Kachu and Hamo. So I guess we could kind of circle around towards this next settlement here. Come in from the east rather than the south. Mm Mm-hmm. And then do you want to keep going towards... Birch Grove, or do we want to cut through the wilderness to what is that one called? Uh, Saco Saloa. Yeah, that. Uh, I don't know that Ezekiel wants to completely abandon this whole flower thing quite yet. Maybe let's see what the status is of this settlement. Yeah, at least get somewhere where if we want to put Orizana for a couple days while we take care of it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And okay. Raz, my good old buddy. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it sounds like if there's no objections, the idea is going to circle around to Hamel and then decide from there. Okay. And then are we still doing the thing where we leave this guy that we captured temporarily? Yeah, so as you all pack up and begin to leave, to aim towards Hamel, do you leave this guy tied up? Do you kill him? Do you untie him? What do you do? I think, Ezekiel, you had a spell. Uh, I do, and I, I can leave him. It depends on how quickly he can get out of it, but it may hold him up for a little while. I'm also fine just leaving here tied. He'll get out eventually. Maybe. They apparently know where he is now. Yeah, he'll be fine. Save your spells. Let's just go. I maybe look a little bit uncomfortable at the idea of leaving him tied up without knowing for sure that he'd be able to get out eventually. It's could, not iron chains. Yeah, we could cut the rope enough that it would be weakened over time as he struggles. I'll leave a dagger be- behind a tree like 30 feet away. So okay. good luck! <laughs> so you slowly can try to waddle towards it. Okay. Um, Alright, so you guys pack up leave a dagger, and begin to circle around a bit more inland to head towards Hamel. And that is where we're going to leave off and pick up next week. Thank you for listening to this episode of Back to the Story. For notifications when an episode goes live, you can find us on Stitcher, Google Play, Player FM, or TuneIn. Download the app and subscribe or favorite us there. If you'd like to contact us, you can tweet us at back to underscore the story. If you can't fit it into 280 characters, you can email us at thebonfirefables at gmail.com. And if you'd like further information about the campaign, the player characters, NPCs, or behind-the-scenes sneak peeks, follow us on either Twitter or on our Tumblr website. Lastly, if you'd like to support the show, feel free to buy us a coffee at ko-fi.com slash backtothestory.